Welcome back guys, this is Chad with Iraq Veteran 8888. You guys ever heard of a six millimeter AR? No, this is not six millimeter Creedmoor. No, no, no. We'll talk a little bit more about it as we go. Let's take a few shots here at the big five hundo with a 105 grain pill, little tiny pill. Go ahead. All right, ready? Yep, got a good strong tailwind. I'm just gonna hold center mass. Go. Good shot. You're in there. Man. Probably about a four inch group. Sub minute. Yeah, buddy. All right, so six millimeter AR. This is a project I've been working on for a, a while. If you guys have been following my progress with this rig and even way back dating to like the, the 224 Valkyrie stuff that we were working on. Um, this kind of came out of the 224. I, I never would have known about this cartridge had I not done a lot of work with the 224 Valkyrie. So this is a, just basics, basics here, okay? This is a 6.5 Grendel neck down to accept a 243 diameter projectile. So typical 6.5 is a 264 about 123 grains or so, going down to about 100 grains. The 243 projectiles that you can run in this, we can go from a 58 grain or even less all the way up to about a 108. So it's a very wide range, very similar to what you could get out of the Valkyrie. However, the Valkyrie didn't really fit the bill for me from a hand loading perspective. It was very problematic in that department very problematic with the twist rates and a few other oddball things. If you guys want to learn more about that, go back and check out some of our old 224 Valkyrie videos. I also did a reloading video on the subject where I mentioned diving into the six millimeter here. Um, but this thing has just done exceptionally well with everything I've put in it from 70 grains all the way up to 108 grain pills. Uh, right now at this moment, I have just over a thousand rounds through this rig as it sits. And um, a little history of the cartridge, and then we'll talk about this rig and we'll shoot a little bit more. And we're gonna push out to about 750 yards today. Um, this cartridge was developed in tandem with a few other Wildcats that Robert Whitley put together back prior to 2010, right around that time frame. Um, he's a very well-known high power rifle competitor and he had used the six millimeter AR and variants of that cartridge for a number of years in 300 and 600 yard competitions. And it really piqued my interest because of the fact that it was so flat shooting, it could run the long high BC projectiles like these 105 grain Burger VLD hunting projectiles that I'm running in this particular load uh, out to some pretty respectable velocities uh, through this 22 inch X caliber barrel here, I'm hovering right around 2,700 feet per second. And the reason that I wanted to go with a six millimeter over say something standard like a 6.5 Grendel was because it more matched the capabilities that the Valkyrie should have had. So long range work, uh, going out past a thousand yards slightly before you had any sort of problems with the projectile going transonic, being able to have minute or sub minute accuracy potential out of a small frame AR um, with those kind of speeds, retaining a lot of energy downrange for hunting scenarios. Uh, that was really what piqued my interest about it. And this particular cartridge, we were just shooting at 500 yards. I still got right around a thousand foot pounds of energy at 500 yards which is just incredible to me out of this frame, this small frame here. Uh, you'd have to go up to something like a 308 or a similar large frame cartridge to get that kind of performance. And really the uh, variants of this cartridge here, they come very close to uh, 243 performance, a 243 Winchester performance. There's a couple other varieties of this, uh, the Turbo and then the Turbo 40 that give you even more powder capacity and you're sending these rounds downrange at even faster velocities. So enough about the cartridge, just a very brief synopsis, but we'll talk about the rig real fast and then we'll proceed to shoot a little bit more and uh, have a little bit more fun on the range here. But this may look familiar to you. This is the same rig that I did run in the 224 Valkyrie videos with the Excalibur six and a half twist barrel. The only thing that is really different is a few accessories that I have on here. I did change the optic, uh, but the barrel, which is really the heart of accuracy, is the same manufacturer. This is an Excalibur barrel. It's the exact same thermally fluted 
uh, 416 stainless steel cryo treated profile that I had in the Valkyrie. Up front, I'm running an RMS2 Hopi K. This is a can that I had custom made. I've got a superlative arms direct gas impingement block. This is a fully adjustable block here. Uh, it's a 12 inch full rifle length gas system. The upper receiver has been lapped. Um, this is running on an Anderson Poverty Pony Lower. You know we like our Poverty Pony stuff around here. I've got a standard A2 buttstock with a Bradley cheek riser on top here. A Geisley High Speed National Match Trigger. Radian 45 degree safety selector. Geisley charging handle, a super charging handle there. And I'm also running their uh, super precision mount. This is a 30 millimeter cantilever mount. It's very, very high quality. And within that mount, I'm running a Leupold LRP VX3i. This is a six and a half to 20 power model uh, with the large uh, elevation turret up top. This is a really, really cool optic. And this is actually a demo model that I purchased from Optics Planet a little while back. And this optic has the CCH reticle in it. It's a proprietary Christmas tree reticle from Leupold with 0.25 mil holds. So it's a little bit less busy than something like a Horus H59, but still gives you good capability for being able to do long range just holdover work. Um, in this particular video, I'm just gonna be dialing. I did dial up to 500 yards there, and that was a 2.8 mil hold. Um, BCM grip, BCM rail up front with M-lock, and up under here I have an Arco rail um, mount from MDT. This is for running like the backbone bag system that I picked up from Coltac. It's a bag mount that can slide along this ARCA rail and you can position it anywhere you need for competition shooting. I did compete in a PRS match down in South Georgia with this particular rig not terribly long ago. Um, the rig performed great. It's just everything about it, it pretty much, in my opinion, in my experience, it maximizes the potential of a small frame AR. It's just, you're not gonna get more power and more downrange energy and more long range performance out of an AR-15 unless you do something in the Grendel family of cartridges. Just my personal opinion and my personal experience, but let's take a few more shots down here. I've got my little ammo novel here keeping my stuff on the shade, so. All right, so we've got 14 rounds here in these ASC magazines. And these are uh, just standard 6.5 Grendel mags. I found that loading them to full capacity um, with this particular projectile, even at magazine length, I was still getting a few little weird binding issues. And I think that was, was causing me some problems at the match. I had some weird flyers down range and just all kinds of crazy mess going on that I wasn't terribly uh, impressed with, but you know, you live and learn. So let's take a few more shots and then we're gonna turn around and uh, shoot 750 here. And this crazy contraption that you see, this is a tactical brass recovery systems brass catcher. Um, I was looking for brass catching rigs because I didn't want to lose any of this lipo of brass. Uh, this is lipo of brass that I'm running. It's about a dollar a piece initially. And I picked up this brass catcher very reluctantly because they're a little expensive. They're around the $200 mark, but this thing has been just fantastic. I actually shot the entire match with this brass catcher in place and it didn't hinder me at all getting in position. And I was able to recover pretty much every piece of brass except for the one time that I forgot to put it on. You know, the brass life has been excellent on that cartridge. That's one thing that impresses me so much about it. It has been. Um, this lot here that I'm running in this video is only a second firing. So this is the second time that I've loaded this particular lot of brass. The first lot that I initially tested, um, what am I on now? I think the eighth firing, if I'm not mistaken. But I've been keeping very detailed records of this and you guys can follow that link in the description box below if you're curious about some of my um, some of my information, some of the data that I've collected using various weight projectiles and such, but um, I've shot everything from 70 grainers all the way up to, like I said, the 108s, and they've all performed great. And the 70 grain pills, I can get those to the mid 3,300 feet per second mark. You can push them a little bit faster, but I wasn't getting uh, terribly good accuracy out of them on the very top end. But it's a lot of energy for something like a coyote or prairie dogs. It's just super fast. It's just so crazy. I mean, but, even inside of like 150, 200 yards, it'd still be a great deer cartridge. It would be. Uh, the VLD hunting projectiles from Berger, they're designed to, they're designed to, you know, go into something like a deer and just go a couple of inches and then basically violently explode. 
Uh, they're not meant to expand or anything like that. They're not a, a hollow point type projectile, but they're meant to, to fragment and just dump all their energy in a very small area, just right inside of an animal. And uh, I haven't had the chance to test that out yet, but um, that's one thing that drew me to the cartridge as well, is that six millimeter, it's legal in pretty much every state for hunting. So you can go pretty much anywhere in the states here and use a six mil and get away with it for medium-sized game. So that's another plus to it. Maybe that's something we'll uh, test out in a future video. We might be able to take this thing out for a hunting video. I'd like to sit in the Rich Carlton and kill a deer from about 450 yards away. Might be able to uh, arrange that. All right. Go ahead whenever you're ready. I'm gonna shoot the coyote. So I'm just gonna right, dial one back mil. down. Yeah, I'm gonna dial today. Okay, So one mil. One mil. I'll shoot him. And then I'll shoot the gopher next the to him. The gopher. The gopher. And we do have some heat out here today and we got some mirage like crazy. It's just not the best day for shooting. All right, one mil. Center mass. Good shot. Man. A three inch group. That mirage is just crazy. That coyote is doing this. With that being said, try the gopher now. Try the gopher. Why not? Oh man, you got a lot of mirage. That gopher's tiny. He's probably moving around like go for a effort. foot. <laughs> what? All right, let's see. Go fair. Go ahead. Yep. Keep doing that. About the same group size. Yep. All right. Good. All right. Tell you, man. Punching out the four. I want to go this... for the little guy, or you want to? Let me. Uh, let me see where I'm at on the big gong there first. Okay. I haven't confirmed this thing in a little while. These so. are all half size D28s downrange guys. They're shoot steel AR500 targets. So 1.8. And the um, the coyote and gopher targets are shoot steel targets as well. All right. Uh, good. Do that again. A yep. little, little bit of wind changing down there for sure. Yeah, it's pushing you around a little bit. All right, let's see. Let me try that little tiny target. He's kind of hiding in there. Yeah, it's hard to see on, on camera, but it's down in the ditch way over there on the left. All right, let's see. That's a challenging target to hit. Yep. Impact. Uh, just off the right edge. Just, just off the left <laughs> edge. Just off the right edge, about an inch. You're not missing by much. That's a 400 yard shot. That's a, that's a tough target yeah. to hit at 400. I'm gonna shoot one more mag at the remaining targets and yeah, then we're gonna go move up. You got 440 and you got five. Yep. So. And then we'll take some shots out to 750. And then, uh, I don't know if Chad said it, but in a future video, we're going to take the 6 millimeter AR out to some extended long ranges past probably 1,000. It'll be interesting. Yep, it will be. All right. I'm just going to shoot a few shots on 443 there. 443 Go. yards. It's a long way. All right. 2.2. Center mass. Impact. Good triangulation. Thing smacks with some authority. It does. All it's right. about a, maybe just under five inch group. That's fine. Good triangulation though. It's all in a nice group. I said typically what I've seen at range with this thing is it holds MOA right over, right under most of the time. So, so it's roughly a minute gun out to yeah. a grand. And it's, I mean, it's an auto-loading rifle. I mean, I'm not expecting it to shoot tiny bug hole groups, okay? I'm expecting it to hold MOA at least out to a longer range. And these days, frankly, I don't care what something does at 100 yards as long as it's not shooting like four inches. But let's go up, all right, 2.8. And then we're gonna shoot five again. I'm just gonna finish this mag off and then we'll move on. Okay. All right, five hundo again. Go. Oh, I don't wanna mess up. Put them on the bolt. 
I don't want to mess up my nice group there. Put them on the bolt. Keep doing that. Yeah, that was down there in your other group. Just over his right shoulder. Yep. Those rounds probably in the size of a small plate, maybe six inches. Yeah, that, that top of the target is really hard to yeah. make out. Oh yeah. Just right over, over the shoulder, shoulder again. Yep. Not terrible. Same spot on the shoulder. All right, I'm going to go back to center mass. Go ahead. <laughs> Just off the right edge of the plate. Dang. Not bad, well, though. Not terrible. Let this thing cool off. It's uh, I don't know if she's ever had this much shot through in one sitting in It a is while. pretty hot out here, man. And it's hot, too. So let's uh, let her cool down. We're going to push out to 750 and see what can be done. All right, guys, I'm going to punch a 6-millimeter AR out to 750 yards. Uh, that's the longest range that we have available here. We are going to, in a future video, take this out to some longer ranges because long range is always fun. I've got it dialed up to 5.5 mils, and we're going to give a half a mil hold for spin drift and see what happens. Chad Spotten, we're just going to play the wind a bit. I've shot this rifle a little bit, not as much as Chad, but let's just have some fun. All right, you going for the big gong? Yeah, just to see where it's at. Okay. See what we're working with. Impact. Just high center. Impact. Can't tell where that one impacted. Yep, dead center. Impact. That wind's pushing around a little bit. Impact. 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 I'm going to go for the D28 to the right of it. Sure. Your grouping is favoring slightly right, maybe two tenths of a mil at this range, if that. Going for the half size? Yeah. Uh, couldn't see the impact. Good again. I'm not seeing anything, man. It's on there. That one was. Might be on the low side. I just don't see the impact. Right over the shoulder on the left side, it looked like. Yep. What a, you know, very smooth recoil in this rifle. Um, I like that quite a bit. And I do like that, that lowered uh, tilt on the safety. That's a nice feature. And the Geisley trigger, of course, is a... Uh, Always a welcome upgrade. And this optic's not overly busy. I definitely like it. In fact. In fact. All right. Now you're favoring center mass. Look, I'm so. going to um, go for the popper. All right. Now that's a one MOA target. So it's right about eight inches. I couldn't tell. Let me punch in a little bit further here. Impact. Dead center, just about. 
just low and slightly left, it looked like. Impact. Impact. Impact, maybe. Ooh, no, barely off of it. Just off the left side. A little bit of headwind. Just off the left side, same place. Right in front of it. <laughs> we had a headwind come in just ahead of us. Impact. Right in the dirt, it looked like. Yeah, I could deal with that. Um, the accuracy is definitely not terrible at all. I mean, for a short action auto loader and delivering that kind of energy downrange and the speed that that round is traveling downrange, I like the cartridge a lot. Um, to kind of mirror what Chad said, you know, it is a hand loader's cartridge, so it's not for the faint of heart. This is something that is going to take a little bit of playing around, a little bit of load development. Remember, this is not something you're just going to waltz into Walmart and pick up ammo off the shelf. I mean, this is, uh, this is something where you're really chasing performance out of a short action AR cartridge. And, uh, you know, it can really be had with a little bit of uh, effort and extrapolation. And remember, guys, when Chad is working up loads for these guns, it takes a good bit of time to really dial these things in just right. You know, there's a lot of factors to consider uh, when you're talking developing a really accurate hand load. And that's probably something we're gonna do a video on in the, in, in the future, where we'll talk about metrics that you need to keep in mind when it comes to developing uh, loads for your favorite rifles. Uh, we've done a good bit of work developing hand loads and we've come up with some really interesting results. And we've learned a good bit over the years uh, about the different testing standards and the different signs that you should look for. So um, we're certainly in that territory here. But guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. We appreciate all the support, all of you who support us on Patreon. Uh, you purchase man cans, t-shirts, merchandise over on the website. Any uh, money you spend on the website or donations go directly back into supporting the channel. Thank you so much for believing in what we do. That's the most direct way that you can financially support us. So thank you very much for watching today. Thank you for our, our supporters. We'll see you next time. Many more on the way.